Good afternoon and welcome to The Soul Shop. I'm your host, Phyllis King. Today I'm going to be speaking with Don Jose Ruiz. He's going to be here any minute. I wanted to start the show by letting people see some of the work that you... And I, it's work is such an interesting word, but some of the offerings you've given us, uh, the book we're going to talk about a lot today, Shamanic Power Animals, The Medicine Bag, The Fifth Agreement, The Wisdom of the Shamans, My Good Friend, Rattlesnake. My goodness. I've looked at all of your work and your, your history. Uh, you come from this incredible spiritually grounded family. You're raised, you, you know, lived in Mexico as a young man, came to the United States. What do you want to tell us? Well, one of the most uh, beautiful things in life is to be grateful to be alive. Mm -hmm. When we focus on that, no matter what life throws at us, you know, it's, it's the medicine of gratitude to not forget what we come in a journey. Yes. So you did, were you always on a spiritual path? Did you always follow, follow in your father's footsteps? How did you come to embrace this wisdom? That, I mean, because it really is wisdom, the way you relate to the earth, animals, to life. How did that evolution come for you? Well, it was two points that I could share from heart. Okay. First of all, it was just a natural. I was a, just a natural, you know, a little, <laughs> a, a little child and I grew up and always full with love. And, you know, that was my authentic self. And I always knew connected with my spirituality. The interesting part, it is when I got temptation to know about the dream of suffering without knowing that it was suffering because this is what people call growing up. So in growing up, it's about suffering. So when I went into that world um, of the planet, what we call in the Totec, the dream of the planet, yeah. that is when I completely lost myself. I lost my roots, I lost my spirituality because I believe in the pure pressure into what I should be. The, 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 the interesting dream, you know, but people tell you what a man should be and you believe in and the pure pressure, the self-suppression. Yes. the mass, the coldness, and all that light led me to suffering. So in the suffering is where I found another opportunity. And then it's when I realized that I remember where I came from, but I'm not that innocent anymore because I contribute to the, well, to the pain in life. And I gave it to myself and I gave it to others. And when I woke up, I said, this is this more than life than this. And then it's when I remember both things. So it is like I was the tree of life naturally, and then I became the tree of knowledge lost in it. But then I remember that it's just one in the front of the mirror and the mirror is life. Wow. You make it sound easy. Is it easy? Well, the thing it is, it's always been easy. It's always been simple, but we are so, make it so complicated to not change. Mm -hmm. And that's when we begin getting um, aware, getting stuck in an island of safety, in a pain that we're used to, in our own bubble, we never want to explore. And, uh, and, and this is when we close our minds, because the moment that we not thinking about it, if it's a life and death situation, or if it's something that someone is about to die, and uh, all of the drama, all of that, you know, irritation or what, all that, it goes away and you enjoy the little moment that we have with one another. And then it's when we completely know that we can let everything, and especially when we're the force of nature, mm -hmm. and knowing that the force of nature is in our behalf, but how we use knowledge, we use it nature against us. Interesting. That's fascinating. So, I mean, technically, my understanding is you are a shaman. Is, is that the, the word? Well, in, the, in this world, they call it shaman. In, the, in my tradition where I come from, they call it nagual. Nagual, yeah. In India, they call it swamis. But I believe it's just aware people in their own stories, in their own traditions. They give a title. But if we look beyond the title... Like in the in my tradition, it comes a point where we call the ceremony of the death of a shaman, the death of Nagual, which is like let's say in a simple. Okay, if I was talking to my little ones, it is like Dumbo received a magic feather, and all those titles were magic feathers to make us believe that we can overcome it with this magic feather. But it's nothing to do with the with the feather. We're the magician. You only have to believe in us. So this is when I come, what story am I believing? The story of my victimization, my suffering, everything that's happened to me, or that story's ended, I can bury it. And that's the death of a shaman, because in that moment, we don't need no titles to enjoy life. Mm. Well, this is, the, I mean, there's so many books we could talk about, but this is the book 
that I just got done reading. This this book made me want to cry about eight times in a good way. That means I'm feeling something and it's touching me on a deep level. But the way you describe how we can select a power animal or see the power in animals, it's really quite beautiful. We're moving so fast and we don't realize the gifts, these creatures, the wisdom they have to show us. But um, when did this become part of your awareness about animals or has it always been or just tell us yes, about it, that? It's always been, I've always been connected to animals since a little kid, oh. but, but, you know, growing up, I began disconnecting with them <clears throat> and it comes up, it came a point like, a uh, eight years ago when my baby puppy passed away of 13 years and I had another puppy before that that I didn't grieve that passed away, but when my puppy passed away, uh, the, 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 last, uh, the last bite that I had, I'm vegan now, but uh, the last bite that I had of, of meats was when my mother was telling me that my puppy was dying. Oh. So I swallowed it and then I had an interesting dream. I, I had a dream that, uh, that Chiva and Nandi, the, the Lord Chiva and, and beautiful cow were friends. And then all of a sudden the sorcerer came and separating them and made Shiva hurt Nandi until he wake up and say, I'm sorry. So mm. for me, Nandi was my puppy. And mm. the puppy's eyes became everybody's eyes, not just animals, but humans too. And then I look at how we inspire one another. Mm. You know, when we see animals in the shaman tradition, some people used to tell us that they come to us, they give us the vision, but no, we look at them, they inspire us, like the Beatles inspire us <laughs> to, to open heart and to sing. The same thing with the little creatures because they leave uh, impregnation in our mind, mm. in a mind that we can take over. So, you know, it's like we say in the fifth agreement, a dog doesn't know that's a dog, a cat doesn't know that it's a cat, it's just alive. <laughs> so in that moment, I yeah. I'm said, I'm one of animal too. <laughs> I'm from the animal kingdom. And the biggest thing humanity is that we're on top of all the animals. No, we're one of them. The only difference is that we domesticate ourselves and we domesticate ourselves with lies and suffering. And that's when I woke up and said, okay, the thing mm -hmm. about life is about surviving mm -hmm. because we are in the jungle. Mm -hmm. And that is when I really felt like the jaguar within me mm -hmm. that inspires me to survive in my own jungle, to take yeah. care of my mind. I love that. And I know when I was going through the book, the way I was connecting to it was... It was a connection. I was seeing the interconnectedness of animals that I, we take so much for granted. And I know you talk about animal cats who domesticate themselves, dogs, but and that, that domestication you just spoke about. But I think we take so much for granted, and myself included, and I would have never thought that. I love animals. But when I quieted myself and I kind of went through some of the exercises and processes in the book, I was like, I'm missing so much. You know, I, even when you talk about a spider, I never thought about a spider having something to teach me. But when the way you laid it out in the book, I'm like, boy, I'm missing a lot. And so as I began to see these interconnected pieces, I think that's what caused me to feel very moved by the writing. Oh, thank you. And, and it's a beautiful um, inspiration when we get this awareness within us. Mm -hmm. It's like we wake up and this kindness can come out without suppressing it. Mm -hmm. And then the most beautiful thing about embracing the animal kingdom and embracing ourselves is that it doesn't stop with the animals and the plants. We are the earth. Mm -hmm. We are part of the earth. So, mm -hmm. and then it's when I see gender, doesn't matter if we're male or female, we're just living beings. Mm -hmm. And that make the service even greater because the gratitude to be on this planet where everybody most everybody is sleeping in their own dreams, in their own, you know, whatever they want to see. But when you notice that life is not eternal in a point of view of, of the human body, physical, mm -hmm. you begin seeing this life as Bruce Dickinson, one of my favorite singers, says a strange illusion. It's a strange illusion how we hurt ourselves, how we grieve, mm -hmm. you know, how we supposed to be if something happens in life. And then my father wrote a beautiful book called The Actor. Mm -hmm. And in that moment, I realized that my animal when it's hurt, when I feel wounds, when I feel like an old wound opening up, the first thing that I want to do is get that character, that script, and be that script that I was in my early 20s, that life is so unfair, that I'm, you know, and I believe it. Until 
And then I go, what did I just do? And then I can see the automatic program for the free will to do in this life. Yes. Gosh, and it's a lot to shed some of those stories that we've held with us for so many years. But I have to say, again, I'm coming back to my own process reading this book and made me feel like I've been focusing on so many of the wrong things that I'm taking so much for granted. We get so focused on how much money we're earning or what our appearance is or our partner, and we're missing so much wealth. And that was remarkable to me. So, and I'm just really congratulating you on an incredible offering because if I can be moved by something, I think many people can as well. But uh, back to the book, of course, these power animals, and you do go through and you offer sort of insights about points of view that animals can teach us, whether it's a dolphin or whatever it is, and rabbits, of course, one of my favorites, and how we can meditate on the gifts the animals give to us. But you said it's a personal process as well, that we can identify with a certain animal and, and just go inside and listen to what it might have to offer us or if one crosses our path. Am I getting it correct? Is that the process? Essentially? Absolutely. In, in the tradition, uh, we used to do a ceremony where my elders did with me. And they say, like people pick one guru, one pick, like people pick one shaman, you will pick an animal. And you will see the animal like a mirror. Just see what inspires you. And then I remember seeing the bunny, how it goes in life and it's the flowers. But then again, it goes under the hole to sleep. And then I imagine that we humans go into all these different um, experiences in life through partners, through work, through heartbreak, through open hearts. And when we go like the rabbit in the underground, in the underworld, that's exactly where it goes into the underworld where we feel the pain, where we feel the heart broken. But there's something that awareness does and kindness does and seeing honesty does is that we go to the underworld to learn. It's our university. We fall asleep, but then we wake up with all this consciousness and it becomes medicine. And we went through it, but we come out of it to give medicine to people who need it. You know, there's a lot of people who went to the underworld before me. And then when they came out and I was in my underworld, they gave me tools. They gave me gifts so I can see myself, so I can come out of the hole again and enjoy life just like a little bunny eating Latino grass. (laughs) Yes, I love that word, underworld. Um, I'd just like to go back a moment. So when we talk about Toltec, that's... That's from history. That's from the history of Mexico and civilizations, correct? Is that, can you give us a little update on how to relate to that word? Yes. Well, the first, the first tradition was the Olmec and it was like one of the pioneers of our tradition. Um, Could everyone mute yourself, please, who's online? (laughs) Thank you. Thank you so much. Let me see. Now I have you muted. Let me let me get you unmuted. Uh, hang on. Bear with me. My moderator isn't here today, so I'm stumbling around. A bit. I think I pushed the button thank, already. <laughs> thank you so much. OK, please continue. Yes. So the, the Toltec is a word in Navajo that means artist, uh-huh. artist of the spirit. Okay. So the Toltecs were considered the religious tribe in all Mesoamericas. And the interesting thing about the Toltec is that we believe that life is the art. So many people channel and we channel life, not individuals. So life can come through us and we can create with what we experience, what we dream. But this is the beautiful thing. Like one master said, I keep forgetting his name. I apologize. But this master said something that did profound my heart. He said, you know, when you are an artist and you suppress yourself and you are robbing the people from what you have to give. It's mm-hmm. like a tree of gives fruit, robs the people from its own fruit. So in that moment, I realized that the moment of the Toltec is to express the art from the heart and to overcome the smoky mirror that's inside of us 
that we give power to with knowledge that we corrupt, saying, I'm not good, I'm not good enough, I'm not beautiful enough, I cannot make it, and all these things that we stop ourselves in paralysis. And this is when we can be loyal to the artist that we are. And this is not about hope, it's about faith. And when you believe in oneself, the art is beautiful no matter how it comes out. We're not here to judge the art or judge anybody's art. We're here to respect the artist, respect the way of life. And you know, in this time, uh, when we talk about love and peace, people say, how can you talk about love and peace? Look at the world. I go, yes. You know, the world is in need of love. And all of this happening around the world is because they believe in lies. They believe that they're not the artists. They suppress one another. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we give our power away. But when you own your power, you can see the old generations. They're going to go like incense. But there's new generations seeing all of this transformation that's happening. And they can continue to create the art just like we did, how we clean up the art of our ancestors. And it goes on and on and on. Because in the old days, the Toltec, we, had, we used to have to hide. My ancestors had to hide to give this message. Because if no, they will get to the gallows pole or the Inquisition. But there's always a way to shine. And that's a beautiful thing. If there is life growing and there's concrete beyond above the, 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 the ground, there will be a way that the plant's going to come out. And sometimes our own thoughts, our own self-judgments, our own suppression, it is like the concrete, it feels so heavy. But when you focus on faith, and like we said earlier, it is that simple when you really want transformation, when you're ready to let go from what's holding you back mm -hmm. for where we're sacrificing ourselves, because there's still human sacrifice. And it's like the barbaric thing that they did in the Mesoamericas, the human heart. No, mm -hmm. we are doing that to ourselves. And the interesting part, the little ones are learning that too. And that's going back to where I come from. When I was young, I, I wanted to grow up fast because that's wanted to hang with the older kids, my older cousins. And, you know, they never want to hang with me because I'm a kid. Right. But the first time that I went to an adult um, ceremony, uh, people were holding this stick that's with red cloth and an eagle's feather, and they were passing it around. And everybody who held it told a story, and they, everybody told their story of suffering, of victimization. And when it got into my hands, I didn't have no story, no story to tell, to share. But in my mind, I believe that in order to grow up, I have to have victimization suffering and and drama and i went in that direction and it was just a lie sister it was just a lie but at the same time i had to go through there to wake up and this is when i have faith that everybody who goes to that part of the underworld is going to come out sooner or later because the seed gets planted in darkness and life beats it and the sun shines the water drops and the seed breaks and it gets over the suppression to finally be what it's become. So all of us have become that. We open our heart. Now we have the memories. And this is the interesting part of the animal kingdom. The animal kingdom are aware of danger and happiness. They can mm -hmm. sense it without a story. Mm -hmm. We can sense danger and happiness, but we put all these stories and we believe the lie stories. And from this point on, if we know that no story is real, but there's action reaction, where are we going to focus our energy into the positive vibration that is stronger than the addiction of suffering mm -hmm. and force of nature that we are, we can overcome any, any addiction. Well, you make me believe it. I, I, I'm one of these people. I mean, I try, <laughs> but I fall victim myself and I try and help people move away from their stories as well. But, um, is it that culture sucks us into it? It's the, you talk about these seeds have been planted and then they, it really expands upon itself. It's a, it's a challenge. I mean, I guess part of it is like this, having community and people who can reinforce what we know is true because I, and I think that's the other part that made me really, was really moved by this book when I'm going through it. It reminded me, we have to be, and we go asleep. And even those of us who are actively trying to stay awake, we can fall asleep. Um, but this was waking me up to reminding me 
that what the truth actually is. So um, when it comes to the, and by the way, folks, I, those of you online, I want you to see, if I can see this from my book, like this is just an example of one of the chapters where um, he talks about um, hippopotamus teachings to remember when encountering hippos. Hippos can be found in large herds grazing there and lazing through Africa, many rivers, lakes, and swamps. And related to manatee, rhinoceros, elements, earth and water, you do tie everything to the earth, which is so beautiful, allowing, calm and assertive, protective and nurturing. And so when we're going through something we, and we need to access those vibrations or feelings, that's why we focus on the animal or it's not, am I doing a good job explaining? <laughs> <laughs> yes, absolutely. And I'm so grateful. Thank you for sharing because it inspires me. And the beautiful thing it is that the animal is a mirror. Yes. Like I am a mirror and everybody is a mirror. And we choose the clean mirrors where we can see ourselves. And there's mirrors for everybody. Mm -hmm. But the beautiful thing is that when we reflect ourselves and speak with the voice of respect is honesty, honest of how we're living. Mm -hmm. And this is how we begin, you know, being alive, owning our power and overcoming and understanding. And especially something that I understood in life is that humanity lives like crops in a bucket. Mm -hmm. People want to get out, but people say, this is my way is better or my way is better or this is way is better. That I always thought when I was a kid that the world of the gods were like, you know, Zeus and all these you know, superheroes from history and religion. But no, the world of the gods is the world of humanity, mm. the world of their belief, mm -hmm. of their, you know, because honestly, I would never put my God that I believe in to fight just to prove right. right. And many people have blind faith that they have to put their belief. Mm -hmm. And in this moment, we can see how in history we're set up to suffer, how we're set up to be victimization, you know, from matrimony and, and, uh, and, and, and not only that, from friendships, from uh, societies, from governments. And the beautiful thing to be aware of is that it's nothing personal. But at the same time, you see a reality where things in life, some religions get corrupted and they program the human to be suppressed. So whenever we are in a relationship problem, wherever we are dead, we begin to suppress and we make ourselves less than, and we get to this higher God that it is not there, mm. that is inside here. Mm -hmm. And gods don't speak English or Spanish. <laughs> it's a vibration of energy. Yes. And then when we know that this vibration of energy is in our physical body, then we can totally see the earth like an animal too, mm -hmm. because the earth receives stardust. Mm -hmm. And here we are now. And what a beautiful um, vision, how the earth got created, mm -hmm. how the plants were under the ocean mm -hmm. and they created oxygen for us to breathe in. Mm -hmm. And then I said, we're no different from those plants. We're the same plant in this amorgasm as I am this human. And then when I begin, not in this, the same energy connecting has nothing to do with my personal story, my mind, my life. No, it has to do something different now. I can be aware of what I really am. And I don't mm. need no fairy tale to be, to not be afraid of death. That mm -hmm. will happen regardless. Mm -hmm. And if I don't focus on a story, I can witness, like my ancestors say, the perfect opportunity, the moment of our life when we can see the transcendence and that's the power of meditation. Many people meditate to get centered, to calm their head. For me, meditation has become a silent knowledge where I can embrace myself. Even if I get into a coma and I can't move, I'm home. Mm. I detach from body. I detach from mind. But at the mm. same time, detaching from that, I can enjoy it. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not, you know, I, I totally enjoy it. And if people say things to me, they don't mean anything because I have currency in this time and it's not money. What my currency is, is my time. How am I going to spend it? Yes. Yes. And that is when we wake up to be grateful to the living animals because we're part of the kingdom to protect them. Mm. And we protect them, we protect ourselves. Mm -hmm. And the, the thing, the guilt, the shame, it's, it's something that eats us alive. Yeah. 
So when we see the animals don't have that, why should we? Yes. So I again back to the book because I I am an animal lover, always have been, but I think we tend to think of animals as something we possess and uh, not something that that we're above them and not some something we can learn from. Not everyone, but a lot of us. And and then of course you tie the elements, you know, fire, water all of that into the process. And you talk about the medicine wheel and different things in the book, how we can utilize these tools, but really just connecting to the most basic elements of being human and being part of the earth. And that's it. We don't, we don't think we're part of it. We think we're separate from it. And I think that was also what was so moving. You did such an amazing job of clarifying that for us in the book. Thank you so much. And, you know, I don't need to go into some of the other books, but you do have, um, I won't share the screen, but you you participate in all these other books. You're busy. Okay. And of course, you, you did The Fifth Agreement, which really, from my point of view, really talks about shifting perspective. Uh, and many, you know, I guess we can talk a little bit about that if you're willing, because that's that's kind of what we have to do to to separate from these stories and see ourselves as part of something not separate yes uh the fifth agreement is a personal transformation for me i never dreamt about making a book with my father or teaching with my father i was in my own hell in my teenage world and when i reached the 20s i asked for my dad's help and he began training me and then one day he had a heart attack just like that And in that heart attack, he went into a nine-week coma. And in those nine-week coma, I went to his um, room and I got these tapes called Angel Training, this messenger training. Mm. And we are the messenger in training. So I begin listening to that because he said that people like baby steps. They're not ready for this measure. So he put it in a closet. And so I take it out and I wanted to learn from that. Mm. So that was my medicine to be close to my father when he was in coma. So he came back, uh, he learned how to be himself. And in the other point of my life, I begin sharing it. I begin teaching. I didn't call it teaching. I mean, sharing it because I was learning and I was sharing what I was learning. And, and in that time, I, there was the year one, year two, year three. And uh, I took all that way out. And I said, whoever wants to transform their life, they will, because they're the artists of their life. They don't need to learn foundations. They have their own foundation what they need to detach and grow from. They already have the lessons from life. So I began doing this. And then father, uh, he got all strong again. And he said, what you be doing with your life, Jose? I said, I've been sharing angel training. And he kind of laughed, you know, <laughs> kind of like he was skeptical. I said, I, I would like to see that, you know, <laughs> I would like to see that. And he said, people are listening. What do you do different? I go, I was honest. I came down from the chaman chair. I told people my story, my life. Because if I don't pretend and I say everything that's in my heart, no one can blackmail me, no one can chain me, and I'm just an open book. And I overcame that. And not only that, when I begin sharing that, the the epiphany begins happening and something magical happened. He began joining me every weekend, every month for for this workshop. And then my grandmother was also there. So we did this for seven years. Oh my goodness. And uh, and at one point, the publisher came in and says, this is the fifth agreement. It, it has to be made. But the fifth agreement is very special for me because in little words to tie it all down, is um, if we're skeptical of our own negativity, if we're skeptical of our lies, hmm. we can transform our life because it's not real. Wow, I just, I can feel the joy when you speak about that and what an amazing process that was for you. I wish we all could have that. <laughs> I want that. <laughs> so in addition to your books, I mean, do are you teaching currently or how, having groups currently? What are you doing currently? Well, with the, it was very magical because, um, because of the time of COVID, we couldn't go to go live anymore. So uh, I did this course with my, my sister, Erin, and uh, my sister, Carla, and my brother, Erin, and, uh, and, and, and my partner, Tammy. Uh, we, we did this, this course called uh, the, 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 the Shamanic tra- Tradition, and uh, it was all the, the Mitote Institute, and we did a full year course, and it was beautiful. People joined us, and then I showed my dad what we have done, and he got inspired to re- 
teach again online. So 20 years when that when the FIFA women happened and he got his heart attack, that was when the dreaming ended when he started stopped teaching that. But 20 years later, in the time of COVID, the Zoom permitted us to talk to people all around the world. Oh. And there was a classroom, but not in a not in a room, in, in computers in everywhere. It was like fast. So yeah. we've been doing that now for we have three years now, year one, year two, year three. Yeah. And th- that's been so magical. And and uh now we're gonna be able to to open up more, but this is one something beautiful that um that we have been doing that sharing in, in the computer world. And I talked to my brother Aaron and said, doesn't it feel like when we were when we were younger, when we were like younger and, and we used to see the father in action, you know, and and uh, in those years. And he said, yes. And he said, it's amazing because we see a whole different generation receiving this message. Mm. And not only that, my brother Michael is also joining us for this. So it's a beautiful family Oh my get goodness! Wow, how how you managed to score incarnating into that family? I'd like to know that that answer. Um, does a does a shaman? Does your do, do you believe or do you have a point of view about reincarnation? Or well, I feel and I know that we all are life. There is no many people have said to me, "You look like Yogananda. You're the incarnation of Yogananda." Well, you know, I will not take credit for somebody else's art. I'm the artist of my own life. I see. And one beautiful thing about the, the beautiful energy, it doesn't die. It's just re, 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 re goes and re, re grows and regrows and regrows. Our energy doesn't die. So if we want to tap into, let's say, Yogananda, we want to tap into the Chidi Baba, into Quetzalcoatl, they inspire us no different than a tiger or a monkey or a dolphin will do. Mm. And I can pretend that I'm channeling the monkey but it's me inspired by the monkey. Okay. I see. But I really feel that we're just one humanity from beginning to end. Mm. So we're all connected just like the ocean is. Yes. I love that. You know, we have quite a few people on here. Are you interested in taking any questions? Not to put you on the spot. Oh, of course. (laughs) um, If anybody has a question you'd like to ask uh, Jose, um, you can uh, unmute yourself or chat me up. I don't have my moderator today, but I'll do my best to not make a chaotic situation. <laughs> chat me up first and tell me what your question is. That's what we could do and I can unmute you. Um, yeah, and I know I'm fortunate I get to have uh, get to talk to your brother next month. So oh, I'm getting all the Ruiz family <laughs> into my space. So I, I guess I'm on an evolutionary pattern myself. So um, in, uh, where, remind us the best website to get you on. Well, I, we, we, we all are in, under my dad's website, miguelreese.com. Oh, okay. That's right. I went on there and all of you were there and all the books. And it's, in, I mean, there's just so much love in your family and so much joy. Um, I just, I, I mean this in the best way. I'm just mm. envious of that. It's just like, there's so much light and brightness that comes out of your family. I'm like, my gosh, how did you benefit? How did you happen to make that happen? But I mean, you could well, have explained that a moment ago, but. Well, wh- one of the things that that happened is that we all were selfish. <laughs> we were, we were all in the heartbreak. We, we all clashed, but then later we healed. And we love and we and we grew all together and we really understand what golden time is and for us golden time is to spend time with one another no matter what's happening because one day we're not going to be here we don't know it's not about fear it's about really enjoying yes um so, are you still involved in music some way i read in your bio that you have a band and all of that yes music for me is my is my passion from listening to music, from reading history of rock and roll, and uh, and from playing it, and uh, yes, I, I and and for me, when I go to concerts, it just opens my heart, and it reminds me when I was younger and I went to church, you know, when you're when you're praying and you shake hands with somebody else, and in a concert you're opening, you're singing the songs, you know, like a Hey Jude, you're like la la la, and then you turn around to the stranger and you point your fingers. <laughs> You're connecting, you know, with, with the power of music. So, yes, yes. Yeah, the infinite. I'm close to the infinite, and music is the language of the infinite because it never yeah. ends. Yes, I agree. 
Well, you know, I just have a sense that the way the people on the call today, as well as myself, we are feeling your information and uh, sort of uh, integrating it as you speak to us. And so I think that's why the questions aren't come kind of flying out at you, that we're all kind of just having an experience with you as opposed to a, a big Q&A. But I'm going to give anybody one last chance to chat me up a question if you want to talk to Jose or post something out here. Going, going, gone. Come on, guys, be brave. This is your moment. There's no bad questions. Let's see. Maybe I should put my glasses on. Maybe that'll help me. Um, 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 let's see. No? Oh. Well, oh, how does one go about becoming a shaman? Oh, that's okay. Well, first of all, it's about embracing your nature, embracing your emotions. It's okay to feel. Like the forest is okay to be itself. And you begin connecting with what your body does, your heartbeat, your mind, and then it becomes an instrument. And one day my grandma said, you know, when you walk the path of Nagualism or shamanism, you can control nature. And I was like a little kid. I can control, make it rain. He goes, no, son, <laughs> you can control the nature within you. And that's the emotions. If you have a negative emotion, it's because your body is feeling sad. The power of your mind. It's like the little angel holding the Virgin of Guadalupe. And the Virgin of Guadalupe is your physical body. So when you become aware that your physical body is a part of Mother Earth, and then your mind wakes up with the power of intent to create, that intent is like the stars taking care of the Earth. And that is shamanism. When you begin taking care of the love of your life, that is yourself. I love that. That's beautiful. Thank you, Sonia, for that question. I appreciate that. Anybody else? I, um, and just remind it's miguelruiz.com and all the books. And I'll just show you the graphic. These are all the books uh, Jose has participated in and the one I've talked to you about today. And this is a great, great read. And it's more than it's a feeling you're going to be moved by the experience of reading this book and some tools you've never heard, I promise you, things you've never points of view, at least through, from my offerings, you haven't heard it. So I hope you uh, will take advantage of that. Uh, let's see, Carol says, can you speak about guilt and shame? Okay. Yes, uh, guilt and shame are the chains that we imprison ourselves with. And that's how we Get the entity a memory and use it again to hurt ourselves again and again. Let's say if something happened 20 years ago or we did something 20 years ago that we're not proud of, that we, you know, feel bad about doing. If we, we hear it again, we, su we suppress to it, we submit to it. And this becomes our, like they say in the religion, we, we, we carry the cross. But now let's think about there's no cross. We're carrying stories. Stories that we use in words to punish ourselves. The moment that one goes into forgiveness, is facing the guilt and shame and is cutting it because what forgiveness does is that not we're not expecting for the person that we hurt to forgive us. No, that's their path if they want to or not. The thing about us is to not repeat the things that make us feed and create guilt and shame and make the fire bigger. And it's admitting what we do. Yes, I was like that. Yes, I took drugs and I hurt Jose. Yes, I did this and I hurt Jose. Yes, I did that, but I woke up and I don't do it anymore. Mm -hmm. And in that moment, if somebody comes and talks to me and says, look what you did, you're always like this, like this. I can have the opportunity if I judge myself and good to put myself in my own cell, in my own prison. But yet again, when you have your power of love, and especially when you're living in golden time, there's no time to waste. I paid for that already. Why should I make the love of my life pay for it? Mm -hmm. It's like if we're having a bad day, why should we torture our partner, our pets, our children? Mm -hmm. And this is when we cut the mm -hmm. lineage of the human the planets because our ancestors, they also were suppressed and they did everything in survival mode. And these times were getting more clearness to wake up and they didn't know what they did. But now we know what we're doing. So guilt and shame. It's something that we can worship and punish ourselves, and we live in hell. No matter who we are with, 
we will always be complaining about life mm. and we will always make ourselves a victim mm. and a victim with no power mm. and uh and then when we wake up knowing okay it's time to forgive myself it's mm. time to cut that and that again is the layers what i called earlier the death of a shaman is a, a ceremony a funeral that we drop our physical form not our physical form i mean i mean the thing that we think we are so now guilt and shame becomes a powerful tool it becomes a tool that make us humble to never forget mm. where we come from mm. nice i like and that and one important thing we're not on parole <laughs> okay okay and guilt and shame make us walk in eggshells mm. make us live in fear mm. And I tell you one thing, sometimes the body shakes, we get anxiety, we get bad. Mm -hmm. And that's when my grandmother said, that's the weather, son. That's mm -hmm. the earth, that's the hurricane coming, the tsunami coming. Mm -hmm. It will end soon. Mm -hmm. Just stand by it. Mm -hmm. The sun will come out soon. Mm -hmm. Boy, wish I had a mom like that. Carol says, thank you. Thank you for that. Um, is there an animal that you would uh, have us uh, learn from to help us with the guilt and shame and getting off parole? <laughs> the hummingbird. The hum oh, I love the hummingbird. The hummingbird is a messenger. Mm. It collects nectar and shares the nectar. Mm -hmm. And we do that same thing like the hummingbird. Mm. But our nectar stories. Mm. So what stories are we coming and sharing with the world? Mm -hmm. And remember, when we're sharing with the world, we're sharing with ourselves. Mm -hmm. So, like we ask in the Fifth Agreement, we all are messengers, mm -hmm. like the hummingbirds. The question mm -hmm. is, what message are we giving to ourselves and to the people we say we love with all our heart? Mm -hmm. When we are aware and we own our message, okay, we do it without guilt and shame. We do it with heart. Mm -hmm. In the other way, if we know that our message is hatred, negativity, mm -hmm. poison, mm -hmm. then we wake up to it honestly without beating ourselves up and saying, I don't want to be that kind of hummingbird anymore. Yeah, I love it. And Lala is sending you a big heart. So, um, um, and I, I just keep coming back to, the, you know, we're not alone. We think we are. And this connectedness to the earth and animals and plants and every, when we start to look at it through that lens, we have so many more resources than we think. We think, I'm so alone, I can't get through this. And we need to avail ourselves of how much is out there. And I, that was my biggest takeaway from the book that all of a sudden I realized, wow, I'm missing a lot. I am not, I need to bring this into my awareness on an ongoing basis and I will be better for it. Uh, Jose, my goodness, I'm so grateful you could come today and spend time with me and I just feel very blessed and honored and thank you so much for all that your education, your inspiration and uplifting us. It's truly a, a blessing. Thank you. Oh, thank you, sister. Thank you for having me, inviting me. I, I'm so grateful. Take care and uh, I look forward to your brother as well. Okay, here's the book again and uh, please go get it and McGillRuiz.com. Have a wonderful day. Thanks everyone for being here.